Hey everyone, this is Adam Kelly. This video is part of the Unity Coin Collecting Platformer series. If you haven't been following along, you can find a link to the playlist in the description. Otherwise, open up your project and we will jump back in. Now we're going to work on the input controller. And the good news is this is much simpler and much shorter. So move to your input controller C Sharp class. And we're just going to go ahead and delete what's already in here. And I'm going to copy in code again. And the first thing you want to add is a private simple character controller care controller. And so this is going to basically give us access to that character controller that's on the player so that we're able to work with these variables right here. But in order to access it, we need to do something in the awake function. So when this code wakes up, we want to set that variable equal to get component simple character controller. So as long as the input controller is on the same object in Unity as the simple character controller, it will find that component when we call this. And next, we're going to use just one other function, private void fixed update. And inside of here, we need to get our input values. So I'll do this one at a time. First, we're going to get the vertical axis value. And we're using the basic original Unity input system. There is a newer input system that I'll mention, and it's actually very nice to use. It's got great support for controllers and things like that. Um, unfortunately, it's more complicated, and I just thought it would be easier since we're only using keyboard input for this to just go with what's already there and it's the simplest thing to use. So what we're saying is input.getAxisRaw vertical. And what that's going to do in our case is basically check whether we're pressing the W key or the S key. And then it's going to assign it to either negative one, zero, or one. So if we're pressing S, then I believe it's negative one. If we're not pressing anything, it becomes zero. And if we're pressing W, then it's pressing po or it's becoming positive one. Next, we need the horizontal axis. And this is going to represent turning. So this is the same idea here, but it uses A and D. And I can never remember which one is negative or positive, to be honest. I believe D might be positive. Maybe it's, it's either right-hand rule or left-hand rule, but um, it's one or the other. And the code that I wrote works for this. So um, just know that this is either negative one, zero, or positive one based on whether you're turning left or right. And then finally, we're going to get the jump input. And when you do a get key, input.getKey, and you pass in this key code dot space, what it's saying is, is the space bar pressed, true or false? And so we're setting jump equal to true if we are pressing the space bar. And then finally, what we're going to do is use this character controller. And we're going to call forward input, or rather, we're going to set forward input to vertical. And we could have done this directly. We could have just called this and set it directly there, but it's just a little bit cleaner to do it this way. We're going to set turn input equal to horizontal. And we're going to set the jump input equal to jump. And that's it for this class. So now we have these two classes that work together. Input controller reads in the input and sets these values. And then simple character controller uses those values accordingly. The nice thing about how this is organized is if you wanted to swap this out, it's really nice and clean and easy to do it. If you wanted to use the new Unity input system, you'd just have to change these couple lines right here, 
versus if we had done it inside of this function or inside of this class right here, you'd have to find all of the places that you were using those inputs and it would just get kind of messy. This is already messy enough. So it's nice that we keep these separate just to keep things organized. And now that we have them both, let's go back into Unity. We'll make sure we have our cactus character selected. Select this highest level one, the same place where you have your rigid body and your capsule collider. And just make sure that you've still got the simple character controller and the input controller here. Now that we have this all hooked up, we did everything right, we should be able to control the character. So let's press play. And if you use your A and D keys, you should be able to rotate the character. And let's make sure that his little sunglasses are visible facing forward. And if you press the, the W key, it should move forward, and the S key, it should move backward. And then as long as you have that allow jump checked, it should be able to jump as well. And I could always uncheck this mid-game, and now the space bar is not doing... Oh, it became... Became checked again, let's see. There we go. I, it was because I had this selected still and hit the space bar, it actually activated it. But right now, if I click in here, I can no longer jump, but I can move around. And you can also play around with things like jump speed. So let's just crank this up and just see what happens. So you have a lot of control over this now. And you can say whether you want the move speed to be really high and it's just going to move really fast. So that's really cool that you've got all this control. And if I press play again, then it's going to go back to the defaults, which is great. If I change them now, then they'll persist. And when I move the character, it will use these new settings. Now, it's kind of cool to have control over this, but it would be nice if that camera was something that we could actually see behind from kind of a third person view or over the shoulder view. So I'm going to delete this main camera. You can just click on that and hit the delete key. And then you can add a new camera. So I'm going to go to create a camera here. And I'm going to make this a child of cactus character. So this camera now is going to move if the cactus moves but it's kind of weirdly placed right now. So let's just first off zero out the position and then we'll zero out the rotation as well. So now we've got this camera and you can kind of see that it's now in the ground. We just want to move it up and back here. So let's actually go into local, or I was already, let's see, yeah, I'm in local view right now. Make sure you've got the camera selected and you should be able to pick it up using that little red square that you've got there. And then it'll only move it on the uh, Z and the Y axis. And then you can kind of place it wherever you think is good. And then if you hit the E key or you click on the rotate thing, you can kind of rotate it downward. So I might still move it even a little further back. And now, if I click play, I've got this camera in a position where if I move, I can now move the character. And we never put a collision collider on this rock, so we're able to move right through it. But we will, we will put a collision mesh on this, uh, and then we'll be able to not go through it. Let's just do that right now. We just need to add a uh, mesh collider. Okay, and if we, not sure why we can't see it exactly, but if we do convex, sometimes convex can be helpful. Um, what it, that does is it just makes it so that the spots that are concave are just ignored. And with a rock like this, we really don't need to have the concave parts of it. So having it turn this into a convex mesh I think makes sense here. It's going to make it a little more performant. So that's a, a good setting to have. And now that this mesh collider is here, I can no longer run through it. And I should also might be able to jump up there. No, I can't jump up there. 
you will notice one weird thing. We are able to stick to the rock. And that's because we have not set our friction on our character. So let's just add that really quick. We'll go up to assets. We'll create a new folder. And we'll call this misc for miscellaneous. And let's create a new physic material. So we go to create and we have to find physic material. I don't know why they didn't call it physics, but that's what it is. Um, and then we'll call this maybe just character um, physics. And what we can do here is we can change the friction here. So we're going to set our dynamic friction to zero so that when it's moving and it touches something, it'll, it won't get stuck on it. And then the static friction, we can probably leave it 0.6. If it becomes a problem, we'll make it more friction in the future. And then where we need to put this is on our capsule collider for the character. So we're applying this to the cactus controller right here, or sorry, cactus character. And now if we press play, if we jump, oh, it's still kind of doing that. I guess that still counts as uh, static friction, or it might be something where we need to change the friction combined to something like um, minimum or multiply, maybe. Maybe multiply. We'll try that one. Let's see if it still does it. Oh, there we go. Nope. Nope. Minimum. Try that. Oh, it still wants to stick. So I'm not going to stress too much about this. But um, if this is something that really bothers you, you might be able to get this fixed um, by messing with friction. Or it might even be something where you have to check if it's grounded. And basically, this is happening because I'm holding forward while I'm jumping into the rock. It would be potentially something that would make the character controller a little more complex. But if I'm pressing forward and I haven't been moving and I'm touching something and I'm not on the ground, then maybe we just don't use that forward movement at all. So, yeah, it would it makes things a little more complicated and it doesn't really take away from the game at all. So we're just going to leave it as is. But the good news is now you've got this functioning character controller and you can add a few more things to the level and make uh, you could even make a little fun obstacle course or something like that right now. Um, but of course, we're going to make a more interesting coin collecting game as we proceed here. Hey, we really hope you're enjoying the course so far. If you are, make sure to check out the rest of our courses on ImmersiveLimit.com. There's other Unity and Blender related game development stuff that you'll probably be interested in. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.